I had a teacher in elementary school who always wanted us to work together on a project. And everyone was always like, oh, I want to do it by myself, and which was empowering. But he's like, you need to learn how to work together, how to work together as a team. And he said, it's no different than, than this pencil. And he would take out a pencil. He said, one pencil on its own is easy to break. And he broke the pencil. He said, that's you working on your own. Now he pulled together a group of pencils and put them together. And they said, now this is you working together. And he's like, you can't break that because there is power in working together with others. And so that was a really good lesson in teamwork, how important it is to really draw people in and work together because you are stronger together when you're working toward a shared or, or common goal. When you're going through a really tough time in your career, in your family, whatever that might be, it's only when you can look back that you have that wisdom to see that that did impact you in a positive way. You can't see it in the moment sometimes, but when you deal with it and you look back, that's the moment that really helps you to propel to that next level. Mrs. Tilton was my high school speech and drama teacher, and she was someone who, no matter what your skill set, was saying, come, join, come be part of this play or this one act or this competition. She never, ever thought that you couldn't live up to what she thought you could be. So the, what I loved about Mrs. Tilton is that she saw in me what I couldn't see. She saw the opportunity to learn and grow and really step outside my comfort zone and try things that I would have never done because I thought somebody else was much more talented than me. Somebody else was much more courageous than me. But she gave me that opportunity and really not so much an opportunity as much as a command, like you're going to do this, mm -hmm. which was wonderful because you couldn't say no. And then once you did it, it's kind of like going skydiving. Like once you jump out of the plane, like just enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. So that parachute's going to open and it's all going to be great. And that's what Mrs. Tilton did for everyone, is she allowed them to jump out of the plane. You're nervous, you're scared, but then you do it, and you do it to the best of your ability. So one of the things that we're working on um, is we're working on an equity profile, and that is gathering community members around the table. We're working with the Telegraph Herald once a month doing a panel. We're doing some sidebar conversations with community members to really get their lived experience with eight different topics from transportation to housing to education, to health and wellness, you name it. We're covering it all so that we can gather this data, compare it to what we did in 2015 to see how are we doing? Are we holding ourselves accountable to, and are we seeing growth in those respective areas? And where are those gaps? And how can we address those gaps? We know through a number of reports in the Telegraph Herald that we have children in third grade that are not reading at grade level. This happens commonly across the United States, and Dubuque is not alone. But we also know that we want to be the leader when it comes to education. And we know it's important that if you're having 50% of your third graders not reading at grade level, that's going to impact them for the rest of their lives. Because we know, and research has told us, that when you're growing up from birth to third grade, you're learning how to read. You're sounding out the vowels. You're putting the words together. But after third grade, you're reading to learn. And so if you want to make that shift for children, we need to be dedicated to helping them achieve that. And the Dubuque School District can't do it by itself. Teachers can't do it by themselves. Other programs can't do it by themselves. So we're trying to pull that all together to address that collectively so we can make a difference. So next year, I'm guessing you're gonna see those numbers changing and those numbers improving. And the next year after that, even more so. And that happens because people get together collectively to make a difference in our community. Some of the best leaders that I've served under have been so empowering and thoughtful and challenging. They've really challenged me to do things I didn't think I could do, were demanding in a positive way to help me make that growth, but then they were always always reminding me and really lifting me up and supporting me so that I could take that next step. And I think that's what we all need to do is kind of lift each other up because that is how we all win.